In this video, I want to work through an example combustion analysis problem that's going to teach us something interesting about this analytical method, that it can be used both for hydrocarbons, which just contain C and H, and for compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen, and a third element, what this slide calls CHX compounds. In order to do this, we're going to take advantage of and really use the law of conservation of mass, applying kind of the standard combustion analysis, and then taking a few steps after that to learn about the element X. So this particular problem concerns the compound ferrocene, which is a compound of carbon, hydrogen, and iron. So we can think of the sort of general empirical formula here as CXHYFEZ. And let's imagine that we have a 0.8 gram sample of this material, and we combust it, and the combustion yields 1.89 grams of carbon dioxide and 0.387 grams of water. Now the problem says nothing about the fate of the iron, and the iron may well be chemically transformed during the combustion process as well. But what we're going to see is that after we've learned how much carbon and hydrogen are in this compound, and their molar ratio and their numbers of moles, we'll actually have enough information to determine the number of moles of iron in the compound as well, and ultimately the empirical formula. At that point, we'll have amounts of carbon, hydrogen, and iron, and thus we'll have enough information to write the empirical formula. Okay, so before we get into solving the problem, I want to do what I do often in relatively complex problems and draw a picture of the situation. Now this is a very simple picture. We've got a compound that I'm here representing as a black rectangle. That compound contains three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and iron in most likely different amounts, different numbers of moles, and the general empirical formula reflects these relative amounts. X moles of carbon for every Y moles of hydrogen for every Z moles of iron in, say, one mole or one formula unit, if you like, of the compound. And our goal here is to determine these quantities X, Y, and Z. And the total mass of the sample is 0.8 grams, and all it is is carbon, hydrogen, and iron. That's it. We're going to use that fact in the law of conservation of mass on a very deep level in this problem. Let's start out by listing what we know here. We've got a mass of carbon dioxide produced in the combustion, 1.89 grams, a mass of water produced in the combustion, 0.387 grams. The mass of iron we don't know yet, but this is going to be a quantity that we're going to want to know ultimately to determine the moles, the number of iron atoms essentially within the compound. To get to the empirical formula, we're going to need to go to the moles of carbon, hydrogen, and iron ultimately, right? And the way we do this in a standard combustion analysis problem is to find the moles of carbon from the moles of carbon dioxide and the moles of hydrogen from the moles of water, since carbon goes entirely into CO2 and hydrogen entirely into H2O. If we knew the mass of iron in the compound, then we could go to the moles of iron just by applying the average atomic weight uh, of iron, right, from the periodic table. All right, so we're going to start here by kind of going through the standard combustion analysis method, right, to determine the moles of carbon and moles of hydrogen. So now let's put some actual numbers to these kind of theoretical problem-solving processes in blue, or problem-solving flows, as I like to call them. So we're going to take the 1.89 grams of carbon dioxide, divide by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, and use the fact that there is one carbon in each molecule of CO2. And this tells us that we've got 4.3 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of carbon, as it turns out in this sample. We're going to do a similar dance with the moles of hydrogen, here keeping in mind that there are now two hydrogens in one molecule of water, H2O, and we're going to divide here by the molar mass of water, 18 grams per mole, and here we come out with 4.3 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of hydrogen. So it becomes apparent now that with the moles of carbon and the moles of hydrogen equal numerically, if we go back to our kind of general picture here of the situation, X and Y must be equal to each other. The molar ratio of carbon to hydrogen is 1 to 1. That's useful to know. We also now know the number of hydrogen atoms and the number of carbon atoms in the sample, and it's possible to determine the masses of these elements from this information, right? We can determine the mass of carbon just by multiplying this number of moles of carbon by the average atomic mass of carbon, and we can do the same dance for the hydrogen. The reason this is useful 
And the reason we would want to undertake this step now is that the sum of those two masses is everything in the compound except the iron. So to find the mass of iron now, we can take the total mass of the compound, which is this 0.8 grams, and subtract the masses of carbon and hydrogen based on the moles of carbon and hydrogen that we just calculated. And this line shows the basic idea. The mass of iron is the total mass, 0.8 grams, minus the sum of the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen. This is a rather long-winded calculation, but just to summarize what's going on here, we have the total mass, 0.8 grams. The mass of carbon is the number of moles of carbon times the molar mass of carbon, 12.01 grams. So the number of moles, 4.3 times 10 to the negative 2 moles, times 12.01 grams per mole for carbon. Now, just as an accident of this problem, essentially, the number of moles of hydrogen is numerically equal to the number of moles of carbon. It's also 4.3 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. And so what I did was simply collected the molar mass terms, right, and, and put these inside parentheses to represent 1.08. This is the molar mass of hydrogen, atomic hydrogen, times 4.3 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of hydrogen. And this will give me the mass of the hydrogen. Right? The sum of those two masses subtracted from the total mass is going to tell me the mass of iron in the compound. And as it turns out, this is 0.237 grams for this compound. All right, so 0.237 grams is the mass of iron within this sample of ferrocene. And now we can find the moles of iron pretty straightforwardly by dividing by the average atomic mass of iron, which we can get from the periodic table. So we take that mass of iron in the compound, we divide by the molar mass of iron, and we get this number of moles of Fe. Let's pause and back up here for a second because everything we did starting here and on is unique to these kind of CHX three element combustion analysis problems. We've got the third element's mass coming from application of conservation of mass to the sample. We determine the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen. The mass of the third element is everything else. And here, this is this 0.237 grams. And then we can find the moles corresponding to that by the typical divide by the average atomic mass of the element idea. And we end up at 4.3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of iron. So now we have the number of carbon atoms in the sample, the number of hydrogen atoms in the sample, and the number of iron atoms in the sample. Essentially, if we return to the picture over here, we now know how many carbons, how many hydrogens, and how many iron atoms I have in the sample. So we have enough information now to deduce the empirical formula. And the typical way we do this is to by dividing by the smallest number of moles. Here that's 4.3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of iron is there in the smallest amount. And then if this does not reduce the other numbers of moles to whole numbers, we scale appropriately. It's apparent here that when we divide by the smallest, this is going to go to 1. The moles of hydrogen will go to 10. And the moles of carbon will go to 10. And so the empirical formula then becomes C10H10Fe. So the procedure here actually generalizes to any kind of CHX compound where X is a third element. Oxygen is, is very common, sulfur, phosphorus, and anything, right? Nitrogen. This kind of a, uh, combustion analysis generalizes to any third element and relies on the use of the law of conservation of mass. It's got this extra step of finding the masses of the elements carbon and hydrogen and subtracting those from the total mass of the material to determine the mass of the third element and the moles and empirical formula from there.